To cut through the hard road surface, you need a pneumatic drill and a foot for the drill with a sharp cutting edge. To flatten a new bit of surface, they use the same pneumatic drill with a different foot at the end. The sharp foot puts all the force into the narrow cutting edge. This flat foot spreads the force out. A flat blade is best for spreading butter, but a sharp edge concentrates the force. Drawing pins have a sharp end and a flat end. When you press the drawing pin in the right way, the force spreads out on the area on the top and pushes the point through the box. When you press on the point this way, it sticks into your finger because the force is spreading out over a tiny point. Drawing pins are machines that concentrate the force. What other machines do this? And who else needs to concentrate the force? What animal made these footprints? This is the Scientific Eye Arctic testing team trying to find the best footwear for soft snow. They want something on their feet that will stop them from sinking into the snow. They have to choose between seed trays, trainers, tennis rackets and wellies. Which do you think is the best Arctic footwear? And what would you measure to test for the best? What about hard, icy snow? Now the problem is how not to slip. Mountaineers wear crampons, sharp spikes under their boots. Crampons concentrate the force and bite into the ice. Pressure is to do with force and area. Each of these bricks has the same weight, but the sides have different areas. Because of the different areas, they sink in to different depths. Why do you think the brick on its end makes the deepest hole? This is school custard. Which of these lids do you think will support the heaviest load? The pressure on the custard depends on the force and the area of the lid. The small lid sinks at 200 grams. The middle-sized lid nearly supports 250 grams. And the big one holds 400 grams. So that's the seventh one, so this helps the most. Well, almost. How much pressure could your school custard take? 
How exactly would you work out the pressure on the skin? 9.5 centimetres. <laughs> When you're in a boat on the canal, getting through the locks is easier if you understand about water pressure. There's a great wall of water pressing on the other side of the top lock gates. Shutting the bottom gates is easy because the water is at the same level on both sides of them. But the lock's still empty, so why is it impossible to open the top gates? You have to let the water in first. It'll run in until the pressure is the same on both sides of the top gates. In this bathroom, the hot water comes from a tank in the cupboard. So why isn't there much pressure? And how can he get enough pressure to shampoo his moustache? The further the water has to fall, the higher the pressure at the bottom. <laughs> you get very high pressure if your water starts from a great height. So where would you look for the cold water tank in the house where you live? In many houses, the kitchen is underneath the bathroom. In the bathroom, the cold water runs out faster than the hot water, so the cold water pressure must be higher. What's the difference in the kitchen and why? Turn on a tap and the pressure pushes the water along the hose. But I bet it won't come out the way he expects. His hose must be holy. Which way will the water squirt out? direction does water pressure press? He's patched the holes, but the pressure's still rather low. By blocking the end, he's got a stronger spray. But has he increased the pressure?
pump more and more air into a fixed space and eventually something's got to give. <laughs> the water comes squirting out, but it's air pressure that makes the rocket go. And it's air pressure that keeps your tyres in shape. They're full of air at high pressure, and compressed air gives you a comfortable ride. There's no extra pressure in a flat tyre. You have to pump in more air to get the tyre back into shape. The more air you pump in, the higher the pressure inside. The extra pressure in this tyre is 50 pounds per square inch. Each side of this block of wood has an area of one square inch. A bag of sugar weighs about two pounds. How many bags of sugar will one square inch of pumped up tyre be able to support? pounds of sugar on one square inch. That's the same as the pressure in the tyre, 50 pounds per square inch. In which direction is the push of air pressure? Squeezing air into a smaller space increases the air pressure. Look what happens when you change the pressure of a fixed amount of air. This syringe is blocked at the bottom and half full of air to start with. Adding weights on top squashes the trapped air into a smaller space. How much do you reckon it would be if it were two kilograms? The pressure of the trapped air is going up. And that's what's holding the weights up. What will happen when the weights are taken off again? This group are doing their experiment upside down. All right, that's about that is carry on. The weights pull down, which forces the trapped air to expand. 700. Um, what stops the plunger from being pulled out of the syringe? Wait, One of these containers is impossible to drink from. To drink through a straw, you need the pressure of the air. These two containers present no problems. Even the cardboard carton is easy enough because something is flattening it from the outside. From a sealed glass bottle, it's almost impossible to drink through a straw.
but when the air can get at the surface of the liquid, the air pressure can push the liquid up to your mouth. Your job is to suck on the straw and lower the pressure inside it. Then the air pressure outside pushes the juice up. Just how far can air pressure push a liquid up a tube? This long tube is full of juice and sealed at the top, so the air can't get in. The column of juice in the tube is almost 10 metres high. Nine point nine. And all that's holding it up is the pressure of the air on the liquid below. It's a tug of war. Ready, steady, pull. The only thing holding these two teams together is air pressure. The teams are pulling, but air pressure is pushing the plates together. We've pumped out the air from between them and they can't be pulled apart until the air is let back in. Cleaning all these windows is a nightmare. So Portsmouth Polytechnic wanted to train Robug to do the job. How do you think Robug's feet grip the surface? Many plastic things are shaped by vacuum moulding. First, the hot plastic is stretched by compressed air and then the outside air pressure pushes it into shape. The scientific eye vacuum cleaner. Like all so-called vacuum cleaners, it actually works by using air pressure. Can you explain how? 